Hi there. In this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to, I built the uh, rechargeable iron carbon cell. That's uh, the ba a battery with an iron anode <clears throat> and a carbon-based cathode. And then I'll uh, later dem demonstrate it powering the electric uh, vehicle. Okay, here I have laid out the uh, basic components of this cell. Uh, first up, I have the anode collector that later will be uh, painted with active carbon material. It's made from 5,000 thick, that's uh, 0 0.1 millimeters graph foil. Very thin, but it's, it's so thin that it's very easy to tear. So uh, what I did was, but I wanted the lightweight uh, of it. So I laminated one side of it with uh, regular la uh, plastic laminating pouch material. And so that, this is how the uh, material's laid up. First you have your uh, printer paper. Then you put on top of that the graph oil. And then you lay your uh, plastic laminating material, one sheet on top of that, and the, run it through the hot rollers on the uh, sealing machine. <clears throat> when, you, when you get it done, it's, it looks like this here. Uh, and that's all you have to do is, is uh, cut out whatever size uh, electrode that, you're, that you want to test with. And it makes it nice because uh, it's actually protected on one side by paper until you need you need it and you cut it out and then you have your, your nice uh, cathode material. Also over here you can see that I, I added some uh, Kapton tape uh, to this electrode because it tends to tear right at this junction here, the, uh, the tab lead and the, uh, the main part of the, the electrode. Okay, next up is the separator material which I made from filter paper, but uh, it's not necessary to use this exact same material. I'll show you what I did use. So if you're curious here, it's, it's shark skin material, uh, large sheets of uh, filter paper uh, right here, read the label. But <clears throat> like I said, it's not necessary to use that. You could just use ordinary uh, absorbent kitchen towel instead of the, uh, the filter paper. All right, next up, I have the uh, iron anode, and this is material cut from 2,000 thick low carbon steel shim stock. And this is the material, uh, the box right here that contains a roll of it, and it's 2,000 thick, uh, 0.051 millimeters. And one very important thing about this iron anode is that it has to be iron. It, it cannot be stainless steel. I repeat, do not use stainless steel for the anode because it, your cell will not work. Actually, on eBay, I got fooled and was really confused for a while and why my cell wasn't working because the seller said that it was 100% iron, uh, but come to find out it was actually stainless steel and my battery just, it just never, the cell never worked. So there's an, actually uh, an easy way of testing uh, to see if you do have carbon or, or carbon steel or uh, stainless steel. I'll, sh I'll show you the test here. That's all you have to do is you get your, your material that you want to test, your, your iron that you want to test. Make sure it's uh, all oil is removed from it. And you can, you can use acetone or alcohol or just scrub it with uh, soapy, hot, warm soapy water to get off the grease. And then you scour it up with sandpaper or emery cloth. And uh, then next you just take some salt solution, ordinary table salt in water solution, and put a few drops on the sheet you want to test, and just leave it overnight. And then in the, the next day when you look at it, it should be all dried up. And one, uh, this, this is how the pure iron or carbon, low carbon steel iron should look. You should definitely see the rust, uh, the reddish iron oxide formed on it. And this, this piece here is undesirable stainless steel. Uh, it's pretty much just salt, it's evaporated. See the rust to make sure that it's iron, and not an alloy. It has chromium in it. Okay. Last up here, I have the uh, material I use for sealing the battery in a pouch case, type case. And here I'm using a uh, sheet of plastic cut from a seal in the pouch. You can really use any polyethylene or polypropylene bag material. 
but uh, you, have to, you have to play around with the settings to, to get the right piece. It's can't be, it, it might be either too high or too cold, so you have to play around with the settings. Uh, I got this method, actually, it's, it works really well from K, KREX2's YouTube channel, and I put the link in the bottom of uh, the, this video description. And later I'll show you how I seal this cell with this method. Okay. Uh, the next step is to coat the laminated gloss foil collector with uh, active carbon material. Uh, the area of this collector is two by two square inches. I'm not gonna show you how to uh, make the active carbon ink in this video because uh, formulations are already covered in great detail on other YouTube channels such as Robert Murray Smith and KREX2. Uh, the links to these channels are in the description below. But I will say that it is mainly uh, made up of uh, sulfur doped sugar charcoal with a uh, CMC SBR binder uh, and water as the vehicle. Once it is well mixed, uh, I just paint it on with a uh, flat wide brush just like this. Okay, now it's just uh, left to dry. <clears throat> you can speed up the drying if you want by uh, blowing with a hair dryer. Okay, uh, the next step is cell assembly. Here is how I assemble the cell. First, I lay down the graph oil collector coated with the active carbon. Then I put on top of that the uh, filter paper separator. Line that up. I'm doing this on top of a piece of loose side. It lifts it off the tray and it makes it a little bit easier to work, to work on. Okay, now uh, the separator is now saturated with uh, electrolyte, which is two molar ferric chloride. Okay, so that now is just left long enough. So uh, both the separator and the active carbon coating is saturated with electrolyte. About 20 minutes is probably long enough. Okay, the cell's been uh, soaking in the electrolyte for about 20 minutes. Let that soak in. And the last thing you do is add the uh, iron anode. It's a good idea to uh, clean this off any grease or and then uh, sand it with sandpaper and a cloth. And the anode, iron anode is just laid on top. So and that's it, the cell is completed and uh, now we will show you how to seal it in the plastic pouch. Okay, we're ready to uh, seal our cell in the plastic pouch. And here is uh, Way down here first is just the uh, ordinary uh, kitchen baking parchment. You lay a piece of that down there, it just keeps it away from the iron. And you lay your plastic, first with the plastic sheets, cut to that. Your cell goes on next. And your second sheet of plastic. Now you gotta make sure that you have your uh, iron at the right temperature. You have to play around the center of the And you just go around the edges. Not on the cell itself, but all around the, uh, the edges.
and that's it. Just trim it off and uh, we're ready to test. Okay, we're at the uh, electric vehicle uh, test track, otherwise known as my kitchen floor. And the battery's been charged uh, for five minutes at uh, 1.65 uh, volts DC. And it's in there now, we just have to connect it. I just push this uh, electro down into the clip. And there it starts the motor. And there it goes. Take a minute to describe how I modified the solar car kit to run on my uh, iron carbon battery. I bought one of these solar car kits from eBay for about two dollars US. I've seen them recently, actually, for 99 cents with free shipping. Here's what the uh, package looks like. Get there. Just so uh, search for solar car kit on eBay, you actually find dozens. Of I put the, the uh, car kit together without the solar stuff and uh, installed uh, two metal clips, one here and one here, uh, that I made from uh, stainless steel sheets. Uh, that, that's what the uh, batteries have. Thanks for watching.